Alright guys, so the long-awaited O3 and O4 Mini are finally here. OpenAI just introduced both of these models in a live stream this morning. And I gotta say, these are everything they were hyped up to be. We've officially passed the point where you can just call these AI models. Because these aren't just models anymore, they're full-blown AI systems. With tool use, agentic workflows, even the ability to generate novel scientific ideas. So without further ado, let's get into the specifics of this release, starting with the benchmarks, then into some wild demos, and finally, OpenAI had one more surprise at the end, a brand new coding agent that runs directly inside your terminal. Okay, so here are the benchmarks. We have the Amy 2024, the Amy 2025, both challenging math benchmarks, code forces, a coding benchmark, and of course, the GPQA, which are PhD level science questions. As you can see on the Amy, they have the scores for both O3 and O4 Mini with tools, specifically Python, and without tools. Remember, these models aren't just models anymore, they now have access to tools, and that completely changes everything. They can literally use Python, a browser, code interpreter, even image-based tools, and they can decide when and how to use them mid-task. For example, if you look at the Amy 2025 benchmark, O3 without tools scores 88.9%, and with tools, it scores 98.4%. Same massive jump with O4 Mini, it goes from 92.7% without tools to 99.5% with tools, basically saturating the benchmark. Clearly, these tools are a game changer. Now, on the Code Forces benchmark, O3 and O4 Mini get a score of around 2700, which puts them in the top 200 competitive coders in the world at least based on this benchmark. And then on the GPQA, we see only its performance without tools, but it's still a solid upgrade over the previous O1 and O3 Mini. All right, now before we move on to the next set of benchmarks, which are the coding benchmarks, I want to play you guys this quick demo of tool use in action to give you a real sense of how these models actually go about using tools and how or why it makes them just so much more intelligent and useful. Check this out. We want to go beyond the EVAR numbers, which are incredible, and show you a little bit how our model uses tools in order to solve those problems. Uh, so here, for example, we have a problem from the Amy math contest. And the problem here is uh, asking you to look at this grid of two by two squares and count uh, the number of combinations of coloring that verify some constraint. And let's see how the model does it. Yeah, so the way the model thinks is really cool. So it starts out by producing a brute force program and then runs it using a Python interpreter. And it gets the right answer, which is 82. But this is messy, right? It's pretty inelegant. And the model recognizes that and then simplifies its solution and comes up with a smarter way of doing things. It then also double checks its answer to increase its reliability, which is kind of neat. Now these models are not just trained to output the right answer, they're also trained to be useful. So in this case, it now gives the solution in words to explain it to a human. What I found really cool here was we didn't train the model uh, to use certain strategies directly. We didn't say simplify your solution or double check. It just organically learns to do these things, which is pretty incredible. Yeah, it's super cool that it comes up with essentially the intended solution here that a human would be able to do, whereas the first brute force solution, of course, um, you would never have time to do that in the actual contest. Now onto the coding benchmarks. We have SWE Lancer, a benchmark that consists of freelance software engineering tasks, SWE Bench Verified, the go-to standard for coding benchmarks, and Aider Polygot, a benchmark for multi-language code editing. Across the board, both O3 and O4 Mini score state-of-the-art performance. But the one that really stands out is SWE Bench Verified. O3 gets 69.1% and O4 Mini gets 68.1%. These are insane scores. I mean, Gemini 2.5 Pro, the model that's heralded as the best coding model out right now, only scores 63.8%. So yeah, we officially have a new leader in coding. Now, if you're still not impressed, here are some multimodal benchmarks where O3 and O4 Mini achieve state-of-the-art performance in across the board. What's particularly interesting about these benchmarks is that there's actually a specific reason why these models score so high. And that reason is because for the first time, these models can actually think in images. According to OpenAI, these models can integrate images directly into their chain of thought. 
they don't just see an image, they think with it. This unlocks a new class of problem solving that blends visual and textual reasoning, reflected in their state-of-the-art performance across multimodal benchmarks. So not only are these models state-of-the-art on traditional tasks like Amy, GBQA, and Code Forces, not only are they the new leaders in coding with record scores on Sweebench Verified, but now, they're also pushing the limits of multimodal reasoning, blending language and vision in a way that just wasn't possible before. Finally, if all of that wasn't enough, these models are also insanely cost-efficient. As you can see here, it costs nearly the same to run O3 with high compute as it does to run O1 with low compute, but the performance jump is massive. On both the Amy and GBQA benchmarks, O3 outperforms every O1 variant at a lower or similar price point. So not only are you getting better reasoning, better coding, and better multimodal capabilities, but it's also going to cost you way less money. Alright, so that's pretty much everything you need to know about the new O3 and O4 mini models. They're available right now to Plus, Team, and Pro users. And I believe O3 Pro is actually going to be rolling out in a couple of weeks to the Pro tier. So it'll be interesting to see how that performs. But now, like I mentioned at the start, OpenAI ended the live stream with a surprise announcement. They introduced a brand new product called Codex CLI. It's a coding agent that runs directly on your computer. It's completely open source, available today, and OpenAI says it'll improve rapidly over time. So this is honestly wild. I mean, it could literally change how developers work. Check this out. Um, and so today, what we're going to show you is the continuation of the Codex legacy. Um, we're going to be releasing a series of applications that we think will define what the future of programming looks like. And today, we're starting with the first one. Great, yeah. Today, we're excited to share Codex CLI. It's a lightweight interface to connect our models to our users and their computers. You can think of it like a reference implementation for how to safely deploy code executing agents where you need them. It's built on top of public APIs like the Responses API, taking advantage of new features like chain of thought summaries in that API, and our latest models like O3 and O4 Mini with multimodal reasoning capabilities. But enough talk, let's actually see a demo. Michael? Awesome. So I went online to see what people had built with O3 Mini. And so I found this cool image to ASCII generator. Um, the author said that they built it with O3, but I'm pretty sure they meant O3 Mini. So, <laughs> Unless they were time travel. <laughs> yeah, right. And so, um, so I thought today we would re-implement this using Codex and O4 Mini, just from the post. And so I'll start out, actually, but just by taking a screenshot. And I'll take the screenshot and I'll drag it to my terminal. And so I'll give it to Codex. And so as you can see, I've passed it in using the image flag. And so Codex will start using that multimodal reasoning uh, that we saw earlier from O4 Mini. And one amazing thing about using these models directly on your computer is you can take any file, any code base that you're working in, just go and grab that, put it into Codex, and um, here we can actually see um, some of that chain of thought that we were talking about earlier. Um, you know, it's asking for some clarifying questions, it's thinking about things, and then it actually looked at the image and even suggested a few things that we might want to do with it. What did you, did you have in mind? Uh, I mean, I thought we would just re-implement what we, what we saw in the post. Yeah, but I mean, since we're live, maybe we'll make it a little bit more fun. Let's uh, add the web camera API, and just for the folks watching on the live stream, maybe let's make sure we keep it in the 16 by 9. I don't want you know, some, uh, some, some really small uh, um, little video, but uh, do you want to go and try that? Uh, that sounds bold, but I like it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so All right, cool. going. So while it's thinking, I think one of the amazing things about Codex is that you can actually see it both think and also run the tools directly on your machine. So uh, like what they mentioned earlier with function calling and the API, you can actually expose any of the existing functions that you'd use, and in the future we'll have um, the full suite of tools you'll be able to use in the API. And while it's thinking, do you want to maybe talk a little bit about how it actually runs the commands? We can start to see it actually running some commands now. Yeah, so by default, Codex runs in what we call suggest mode. And so it's, as it's running, it suggests commands to edit, or uh, commands to run, or files to edit, and you get to approve each one. Um, but that can get a bit tedious. And so for the sake of the demo, I ran it in what we call full auto mode. Yeah, and a little bit about full auto mode. It's a mode where you can allow the agent to go off and do its work, but still stay safe and secure. So it's able to run commands, network disabled, and limit the edits that it makes to the directory that you ran it in. So it gives you the peace of mind of actually having something that can go off and do things, but without the risks that come with just letting it run whatever command it wants. It looks like it's already, it's pretty fast, so it's already done. It's already done. Uh, so I'm gonna go and pull it up. Yeah, so it said it created this ASCII uh, HTML file, so let's go pull that up. Uh, Got to give it some permissions. Always need some permissions. And let's see. 
Oh, that's oh, sick. oh that's nice. Sick. Oh, sick. it even has a little with slider. Let's see. Uh, not quite what I thought a with slider would do. Oh, but it's low res us. I, I, do, oh. love, I do love the low res version. Uh, you want to say hi? There we go. Hi. Nice. Amazing. I think it's safe to say OpenAI is back on top. They've got the best reasoning models out right now, arguably the best non-reasoning models too, with the release of GBT 4.1 earlier this week, and they're just continuing to push the frontier of what's possible. I mean, thinking with images? That's pretty insane. Anyway, let me know what you liked most about this release. Was it the new models, or I guess the new AI systems, or was it the coding agent that literally runs in your terminal? Drop your thoughts down below, hit that like button, and if you enjoyed this quick and simple breakdown, please make sure to subscribe, because this is exactly what we do here on the channel.